How important is solder? Hmm. Well, this is a new question. It comes from Bo in Denmark, and Bo writes, Hi, Paul. Thanks for your videos. My pleasure, sir. How important is the solder you use to connect the speaker drivers to the input connectors? Is there a difference in the quality? Yep, okay. Well, uh, yes, there is. So, solder, as you may know, is kind of what glues our world together, if you will. And it is, a, it is as important as the wire, maybe even more so. If you take a typical circuit um, and, well, my, I'm not going to be able to show you one. Let's see, are there boards here? Yeah, there's boards hanging out here. All kinds of stuff hanging out here. What do we got? Yeah, these are just little boards. But I mean, even, even a little tiny board like this, this is just a little, a little button board. You know, if you look on the back of this thing, what are there's one, two, three, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, you know, there's like, you, you can probably see, there is a number of connections. Now, this is just a button board, right? It just turns a light on and off. But there's 16 soldered connections on here. And imagine how many connections are in a DAC. Thousands upon thousands of connections that are soldered in place, or at least hundreds, you know, depending. I mean, most of the connections are internal in the silicon, but a BHK amplifier probably has 500, 600 solder joints on it, all done by hand, some of them by machine, but most, because we use through holes, most of them done by hand with a very particular kind of solder. Now, we use a lot of silver in our solder, and we used to use lead. So for years, 60-40, Kester 60-40 solder. Huh. That was the stuff, right? It was 60% tin, 40% lead, if memory serves correct. Um, everything today, of course, what's, what is it? I'm trying to see what... I always do that, and then I can't see, and then I put my stupid glasses on. So this is Kester, and what is this? 8 millimeter, uh, 40, rosin core, silver solder. Okay. The rosin, and that is what's known as flux. And um, the, the trick is what, you know, with solder, you got to get your iron up to about 700 degrees. So these little pencil irons that we use here, you have to get that up to about 700 degrees. And then you take the solder and you, shh, and it, it melts. Well, what makes the solder melt is a thing called flux. And that's inside of here. And we also have external flux and it, it gets it to melt, and um, it's kind of like a good analogy would be putting ice, uh, salt onto ice. It kind of lowers the, 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 the freezing, or what is it, raises the freezing temperature? Whatever, I'm not thinking straight, but you know what I mean. You put salt on ice, and it melts, right? In the same way, you put flux on solder, and if you get the right temperature, it too melts. And then you make your connection. So there used to be, years ago, we did tons of experimenting with different kinds of solder and, and the different sound. My, my buddy Peter Moncrief at the IAR, the International Audio Review, used to produce something called Wonder Solder. And it was this amalgam of, of silver and all kinds of good metallurgical exciting things in it. And uh, it, it absolutely had an impact on sound quality, for sure. And we, we used to buy, I mean, we would never spend money on expensive solder if it didn't make a difference because nobody knows what we're using inside of this, but we do because it does make a difference. Now, we're, uh, you know, regulated in that we can't have lead in our solder anymore, but we certainly don't have to pay for silver, but we do because it sounds better. All the connections run through the solder, just like a fuse or a wire or, or a connector. It's all important. All of it is important, and so too is the solder, which is why we, we use expensive solder on our products. All right. Thanks for the question. Uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.